Merry Christmas, Christus Victor. We bring you Christmas greetings with a few stories from our childhood homes. My Christmas story growing up in the Brueggemann household was that we started our Christmas Eve off with church. It was the family service. And we would be on our way down to the garage to get in the car. And my dad would always pause and wait and say, oh, I forgot something. And he would run back to the house and we would all proceed and wait in the car. And then we would go to church and we'd of course have Silent Night, first verse in German, and uh, Stille Nacht. And then we would light our candles and we would be surrounded by all the families that I had grown up with. The college students had come home and it was a uh, time that uh, we could just hear the birth, the Christ birth story. And then we would go home and we would see that the living room had been transformed and Christmas would come. Well, I want to share my story. When I grew up in Frankfurt, Germany, we had a small apartment, three-bedroom apartment, and also on um, December 24th, my mom, uh, my, my older brother, Karl Heinz, we all had to go into the kitchen. And there we had to wait because mom said, uh, does Christkind come? The Christ child is coming and we have to wait. And so we were sitting and we had little folding chairs there and looked <laughs> to the clock and looked to the clock and we knew around six o'clock then uh, the time would come. And my brother, older than me, taller, he got on the chair and changed the time. And he made it to six o'clock right away. No waiting anymore. And he called my mom, and she was surprised that uh, the time already moved forward quickly. And, uh, and when the time then was, and she decided when the time was right, we all walked into the living room, and there was a real tree with real candles on it, wax candles and gifts on the, on the, on the, on the floor. And we had to sing, just like you, uh, Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, Silent Night, we sang it, and then we had Bescherung, which means we exchanged gifts, and it was very touching. And sometimes we celebrated uh, Christmas with my grandmother in the Bavarian forest, and so we drove there, and Christmas Eve was also very special because we went to Christmas uh, Mass, uh, she was Catholic, uh, in the middle of the night, and we had to drive with a car for a few uh, minutes, and, um, and the service was very beautiful. And I remember the manger it was all carved in wood, and we looked at the manger. But then we didn't drive back. We had to walk back through the forest. We had candles. We had flashlights. And it was always a lot of snow and very dark and probably two or three miles uh, walking back to the house. And then we had, got hot tea or hot chocolate. So these are my childhood memories, very fond memories, and um, so I'm very grateful for that. Greg, what about you? Do you well, have some I, too? I do. Yeah. Uh, I'm very honored to be sharing our tales of glories of Christmases long, long ago with both of you. Yeah. Um, when I was five, I remember I got a desk for Christmas, wow. and I was very excited because I really wanted it, and as soon as we finished opening gifts, my dad put it together for me, and right then and there, first thing I did being an artistic person, I went and gathered up my paper and my crayons and began to frantically work on pictures mm. that I was going to give to oh, my family who beautiful. were coming later in the day. Nice. Mm. This memory was brought back into my head this past weekend as I'm watching my youngest child, Anastasia, who's also very artistic, working on reindeer and snowflakes and gingerbread men, coloring them, putting stickers on them, to give out his gifts to everybody. Mm. And it took me back to being a five-year-old at my little desk, frantically working on gifts, but also reminded me why I wanted that desk to begin with. Yes. I wanted my place to work on doing what my ultimate goal was, which was giving back. Mm -hmm. And it warmed my heart to see my daughter doing the same thing and how important it is to her to yes. give back. It also reminds me of what drew me to Christus Victor to begin with. And that is the spirit of giving that is the theme of everything we do here at Christus Victor. 
My family and I are so blessed to be a part of what we have here in our Christus Victor community, the abundance that we share as that community, and the fact that we give more than we have, and that there are no limitations when God is in charge. Yes. It also brings me to thinking about what's gone on this past year. We've had an amazing start to our City on a Hill campaign due to the generous giving of our community. Yes. And that we have so many ministries and so many initiatives that are going strong right now. But also another reality is very present, and that is that there is a need that we still have yet to have fulfilled. Now, when we look at what our general fund is compromised of, we're looking at our staff, our lights being turned on, our heat, and all the things that allow us as Christus Victor to open our doors and do our work in this place every day. And right now, our general fund greatly needs your help. So I ask in the spirit of giving at this late time of year when the spirit is in the air, I ask everybody to pray on giving a gift that will go towards our general fund so that we can continue as the community of Christus Victor to continue these initiatives, to keep our strong momentum going and finish out the year strong so that, again, we can continue to do all the wonderful work and the giving back and the sharing our abundance that we've been working on all year and for years past and then for years to come. So I really look forward to seeing everybody in the next couple of days and weeks around the church as we celebrate the birth of Christ together to spend this time with Pastor Melanie and Pastor Stefan. And on behalf of them, we wish you all very Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas! Merry Christmas!